This is Pastor Stephen Emerson. And this is Lady A. And this is the radio broadcast of Deliverance by Faith Ministry. Psalms 138 and 8 says, The Lord will perfect that which concerneth you. This is the year of perfection, so that we will be able to carry the weight of His glory. So open your ears and open your heart and receive what God has placed in our spirit for you today. God bless you. God bless you. I was just about getting off, getting into that music there. But we, we just thank God for another day, another week that the Lord has allowed us to be yet in the land of the living. There's so many things going on, so many things all around us. And we thank God for every day. I just quickly... Side note here, every day, every waking moment of our day, we need to con- continuously say, thank you, Lord, all day long. Let that word be in your mouth all day, continuously. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Watch this. Because one, it's the air that you breathe is his air. <laughs> so thank you for allowing me to breathe your air. <laughs> when, right. the, the air that I say thank you with is your air. So I give you praise. I thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. We got uh, our co host, Minister James. God bless you tonight, sir. God bless you all. I'm glad to be here, sir. Uh, uh, other co-host and producer, Pastor Mike, is in the controls. Yes, and thank you for be, letting me be here, and God bless and give God all the glory. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, tonight, we want to talk about when right is wrong and wrong is right. Because a lot of stuff that's going on today a lot of things that people are saying are right. The Bible says it's wrong. And a lot of things that the people are saying is wrong, the Bible says it's right. And 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 it's not so bad with me, with me now, personally. I'm going I'm to I'm give you me personally. It's not so bad. I expect, not, no, no, let me rephrase that. I expect the world to say this is wrong when it's right. But when the church says it's right when it's wrong and the Bible says it's wrong, then I have a problem. You understand what I'm saying? When people in the world, they say, okay, I'm going to give you an example. The world, the Bible says homosexuality is wrong. Somebody said, I knew he was going to say that. Well, you knew it, so then what do you expect? Uh, When the Bible says that homosexuality is wrong, and you, okay, okay, let's don't even take it there. Let's make it a a pertinent, uh, on-point statement. When the Bible says sin is wrong, Mm -hmm. period. Here we go. When sin in any shape, form, or fashion is wrong, the world says it's okay. Mm -hmm. But the church now says that sin is okay. Now I have the problem. Because God says he hates sin. And we, the church, we're supposed to love what God loves and hate what God hates. But now the church is embracing sin. And we're calling what is wrong right. It's okay. As all you heard me say many a times, today's doctrine says that, okay, okay, we grew, we come up, in, and the Bible says to be saved from sin. Jesus came to save us from our sins. That was right. the purpose of him coming, was to, to redeem us 
so that we didn't have to die and go to hell for our sins. He became he became our offering so that God so that we could we didn't have to go to hell. Mm-hmm. From right. our from our sins. But today's doctrine teaches you can be saved in sin. You can still commit and do sin and still be saved. Saved mm-hmm. from what? <laughs> All right. What are you saved from? Come on. Yes, sir. Okay. Noah, I know I'm going way back there for some. Noah built an ark. This big, humongous ark. Boat. Yacht. Uh, luxury liner was built. <laughs> To save people from what was to come. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. who was saved? It was all those people that was on the earth. The ark was built big enough to house anybody and everybody that would get on it. It was there. The boat was there, and all you had to do was get on. <laughs> all you got to do was get on. It. But the people, they refused to get on it. So how were they saved? Come on, come on. They weren't saved. Because why? You didn't get on the boat. And you didn't get in the ark. And so... This is another. This is what I'm saying. If you didn't, if you're not in, in, if you don't get on the gospel ship, the boat of Jesus Christ, come on, the ark of safety. How? What are you saved from? Mm-hmm. That's it. If you That's still it. commit sin, how are you saved from sin? <laughs> yeah. I can't believe. I can't believe how people. Feel that, well, watch this. I went to church. That's good. That's good. My mom went to church. But you might have heard me say this, and I want you guys to repeat after me. Standing in your garage. Standing in your garage. garage Does not make you a car. Does not make you a car. Does not make you a car. Come on. That's it. That's it. What do you mean, preacher, standing in your garage? Because church, you can stand in your garage all day, but you'll never become a cop. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you could go to church all your life, but that don't make you a Christian. That don't That's save it. you. You got to have that life-changing, transforming experience. Uh-oh. Uh oh. You got it. You got it. Bring it home. Yes. yes. John, Jesus, Jesus came to uh, with that Nicodemus and said, "You got to be, you got to be born again." Come on. Uh huh. What are you talking about, born again? How am I going to go back in my? How am I going to be go back in? I'm a grown man. I can't even go back in my mother. He said, "No, man, you missed the picture." Come Not on. Born. born not born of the physical body, but born again in the spiritual body. Preach. And and we got people today that have not ever they go to church, they go to church. They yeah. go to church. Brother, when I say they go to church, they will not miss a service. They go to <laughs> church. They go to church cleaning service. They go to choir rehearsal service. They go to Usher board meeting service. They go wherever service that they have Come on. Their church, they go to church, but they're not saved. All right. Come on. Because they right. never had that personal encounter with Jesus. Wow. Mom. So now the problem is the problem is you never had that personal encounter with Jesus, but you're still going to church. Well, they yeah. may hang around long enough, but how can I have? How can you get something that is not being available 
are made available. Mm. Mm. Yes, you're going to church, but Jesus is not being made available to you in that church. All they are giving you is bells and whistles. Preach. Having a form, the Bible says, having a form of godliness. Mm-hmm. But denying the power. What is the power? The transformation power of Jesus Christ. But we, on do, it, bro. we do what church do. We sing, we shout, we wave our hands, we run up and down the aisle, we speak in tongues, we do all this other stuff that, that church look like. But the power is the, the, the one scripture I was reading it today. It says it's not by power. It's, 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 the, it's not by word, but it's by power. All right. We are not right. saved by, by the power of God. We are saved by the power of God. It's the power of God that keeps us. Come on. Mm. Come on, preach it now. Yes, yes. Yes. Power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. yes. You, you can't do it without it. And this is the problem with a lot of people. You're trying to do it without. You're trying. You're trying. You're trying to drive your car on fumes. You see that the, the needle is over there on E, and you're just like, oh, I can make it. I can make it. And, and, and. Watch this. Watch this. Every minute that you're riding, every minute that, that car is on, is burning gas. Mm-hmm. Come on. Now, yes, sir. a smart person will pull over and go and get some gas. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Because you will not try to make it further without refilling, putting money, putting gas in your car. Yes, sir. And, and and this is what we're doing with, with God. We're trying to go on our own energy, and after a while, what happens with that car when you don't put gas in it? Come on. <laughs> now you're sitting on the side of the road talking about what happened. I don't know what happened. Come on. Amen, Amen brother. Amen. I don't Amen. know what happened. I don't know why. I'm not going and why I'm stuck and why you don't know why, but hey, <laughs> it's happening. Yes, this is what's going on. And you need you need to stop and get some gas. Mm-hmm. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. Come on. The Holy Ghost being filled filled F I L L E D filled on. with the Holy Ghost. Is the gas in your tank? Come on, that's right. That's right. That will keep you going. That's what keeps you going. Energizer. Tank. Your tank is steady. You still study burning uh, gas and not putting gas in it. Then guess what? You're gonna run out of gas. Come on. <laughs> and when you you're gonna run out of gas at a time that you don't need to run out of gas. When you yeah. need to have gas, um, uh, you're gonna run out. The, the, the Jesus was talking about the five five wise and five foolish virgins. And he said, "We're out of gas." <laughs> and the, and, the, and the, the wise version said, "We can't help you." <laughs> right, because you should have had gas on your own. You should have right. had. Don't come to me asking for gas. You should have. You should have. At the time that, at the time that, it was it was okay to go and get gas. That's when you should have. While you was riding down the street and passing all these gas stations, you should have stopped and got gas. Come on. You shouldn't have gotten. There's a place. Watch this. There's a place in Florida. Called Alligator Alley. Oh yeah, Alligator Alley is about a hundred miles mm-hmm. almost of nothing but Everglades, and just about fifty miles of Alligator Alley. There's one gas station, wow. one rest stop, and they tell you, you say, now look, you better make sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
you better make sure that you got enough gas to endure alligator alley. Come on. Because mm. if you run out of gas, brother, you're going to be stuck in the middle of nowhere and there's nothing we can do for you because ain't nothing out there but alligators and snakes. That's it. Wow. So for your own safety, watch this. For your own safety, check your gas meter and make sure you have enough gas to get through here. Don't, no, don't second guess and say, well, I can make it. I think I can make it because something, stuff happens. Stuff right. happens. And you better make sure that your tank is full, that you can make it all the way through this this stretch of highway. Amen. And so, so when you when 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 again, if you and so we, they give you one more opportunity. They say, well, okay, if you made it this far, and you don't need gas to keep going, but if you made it this far and you see you need the gas, we got one opportunity for you to get gas. So that you can make it back into population, more mm-hmm. populated areas where there are other gas stations. Mm-hmm. That's it. But again, if you run, especially at night, if you run out of gas out there in Alligator Alley, and it is what it say, Alligator Alley. Why do you think they call it Alligator Alley? Because you're in the Everglades. And that's what populates the Everglades, alligators, and boas, boa snakes. And they, they are, they are, you're in the middle of their inhabitants. Now, for the last couple of years, they put a fence up. But that fence is not guaranteed. Mm. That it keeps them alligators off the road. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but for, for you that never been there, alligators at night especially, they, they're they known to cross the road in the day, but at night they cross the road because they get out from behind the fence and they're going from one side of the, the highway to the other high, other side, other, other side of the, the uh, is, is one road going through marsh and swamp. And so the road sits on there. There's two lanes. Yes, there's two lanes. But from for the alligator to get from one side of the marsh and swamp, you got to cross the highway. Mm-hmm. Now, you're stuck out there <laughs> sitting still. When that alligator comes, guess, who, guess who's lunch me? <laughs> That's it. Guess who he's trying to he's – trying, and who he's going who he's gonna have for lunch? Mm, it might be you. Why? Because you didn't have gas in your tank. So mm-hmm. I'm saying all of that to say when you're riding down the the road and the highway of life, you don't have no gas in your tank. And when you need to have gas, you don't have gas. Guess what? The devil got you now. You are, you are, you. It's possible that he will he will attack you, not just attack you, but he will over he will get you. He will eat you up. Why? Because you should have had gas in your tank. Yeah, yeah. Should have had strength in your tank to keep Ooh. your car to keep you going. And not sitting down, broke down on the road. So, how many people have been eaten by alligators on the highway? (laughs) It's unconceivable how many people have gotten attacked on in on alligator alley by alligators because they're out there. You in their inhabitants. And, and so, so as we in life, you're in the devil's. You're in the you're on the devil's turf. That's it. That's it. Didn't have gas. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, instead of a victor, you're a victim. <laughs> That's it. 
You you you, you 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 devil bait. You you alligator meat. Amen. Yeah, and 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 you don't know if you don't know about alligators, you don't mess with them. Mm-hmm. You can't tame an alligator. You can't tame him. He, he's untamable. <laughs> he 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 eat other alligators. Mhm. That's it. That's it. Yeah, like you were saying about the right. enemy there, bro. Uh, you know, that's what he does. He's uh, he's cunning, man, and he knows exactly when he's like a sniper, you know. Mm-hmm. He's always watching. He's always waiting for you to put your guard down and know. Uh, there you go. There you the minute, go. Yeah, the minute we drop our guard, then that's when he uh, he attacks, you know. But um, he knows his time is short, and... He knows that, uh, you know, Jesus done got him marked already, so he he's already on the losing side. But what his scheme is to get us comfortable, like you were saying, and when we are comfortable, we're not thinking about the actual day of the Lord, which which uh, the Book of Revelation tells us about. Also, it's you know it's here, you know, this uh, chapter here, you know, the day of the Lord that's coming. He say he knows when the day of the Lord appears. He knows what his end gonna be. But he wants us to, you know, be comfortable. Like you was talking about going to church and you know, if I get busy just going to church like you were saying, stand in church, you know, whatever the preacher throw out there, you know, he's not putting things the way it's supposed to, some of them. I know not all preachers, you know, are the same. But, you know, what we are supposed to be focusing on is, uh, you know, the coming of Christ. You know, he tells us that he is coming back. He is true to his word. But Satan wants us to, like you say, not hear this thing. He wants us to uh, get the feel-good message. You know, everything will be all right. You know, the Lord is good. He is forgiving. And all this is true. But he don't tell the whole story. The whole story is, you know, when he comes back this time, you know, he, he's not going to come back, you know, the forgiving one and, you know, the one that, you know, that lets you get by. He's coming back to judge this time. And uh, he said he have his, uh, his his reward with him. And he's going to repay each and every one according, according to, you know, the works that, they, that we have uh, put forward. And I think that's, uh, a believing heart is what we are supposed to really have. And, uh, you know, when he comes back, he's not going to play this time. And I was looking at Revelation this morning and uh, how, you know, the seals, man, they're opening up the seven seals. I'm going to tell you what, you know, to somebody that's not a believer, well, I'm going to tell you the truth to a believer. You know, this thing, it's, it's not funny. Uh, you know, John was talking about all those seals that, you know, that he was opening up. Each one, you know, it had something, I mean, I'm talking about devastating. It's not nothing, you know, uh, the, 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 the rocks that going to come out of the sky, man, the stars. You know, I heard this preacher talking about how one star that hit uh, somewhere or another, it was back in 18-something. He said it took out 700 miles. One, just one uh, asteroid. Now, it took out 700 miles of trees and all this stuff. So just imagine, uh, Revelation 6 says they're going to be coming down like figs coming out of a tree when it's shaken by the wind. That's how these stars are going to be coming down, see? And they ain't going to be no little small thing. They're going to be the size of boats. I'm talking about boats, man, yachts, and, and, you know, big trucks. This is how big these things are going to be. And now just imagine if one took out 700 miles Imagine how many people, what, 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 what are we going to do? That's what the word says. Who's going to be able to stand? Talking about the big men, the presidents, and all these, all the big officials, everybody is going to be running. And they're going to say, now the day of the Lord has come. So uh, that's the question that you have to ask yourself. Where will you be in this day? Where will you be? That's the question. That's all I have. Go ahead. 
yes, we have to put these things in mind. And, and this is what, this is the purpose of this broadcast. This is the purpose of our, of our ministry. Mm-hmm. I, like, like Minister James says, you have other ministries that you hear and you listen, and they, they, you know, they, they, they're saying what they're saying, but our mandate for, to, for this season is to prepare the minds of the people for the mm-hmm. return of Jesus. That's right. This is what he told us to do. This is what he told us, per se, me to do. And now these mm-hmm. brothers that come on and these other uh, ministers that come on with us, this is our focus, is to help prepare you for the return of Jesus. Uh-huh. Amen. Is coming to think about his return and to prepare yourself. Uh, this is not our home. We're just, I hear people say we're just pilgrims passing through. Hey. Okay. We're, we're, we're pilgrims passing through, but uh, we're not here to stay. Come on. We're not here to stay, and, and we know it. And, and now, now our Redeemer is coming to Come on. Rest. What, what, what is he coming to get? Uh-oh. He is coming, watch this now. Uh-oh. Is, this is what the rapture is. Let me explain to you. Because Uh-oh. some of you might have heard that phrase, the rapture. The rapture is everybody. No, okay, let's say it this way. The rapture is God removing his spirit from the earth. That's it. This is what the rapture will take. This is what will happen when Jesus comes back. Jesus is coming back to get everybody that has his spirit in them. That's it. That's it. So then, like Minister James was saying, when you read the book of Revelations and it talks about after the rapture, Come on. the spirit of God will be removed from the earth. There will be no love in the earth. Come on. Mm-hmm. The spirit of love has been taken out. Right. The Holy Ghost has been taken out. Oh. Right. The, 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 the spirit of sin, the man of lawlessness, will be fully exposed. Come on. That's it. That's it. And, and you think crime, <laughs> you think crime is at a rampage now? Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come oh, on. Yeah. It's the bad thing about it is that Jesus will no longer, the Bible says Jesus will no longer be the, 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 the offering for sin for the people that's left. Here. Come on. You will have to be your own sacrifice. Oh, yeah. Come on. You will have to die for your sin. Come on. And, and, and because the Spirit, so that's why he said, seek me while you, I may be found. Sure. While, while it's easy, while my Spirit is here, come on. Yeah, freely. You can come get me freely. Don't put it. No, no, no. Because like they said, when you got these people saying, well, you, you're going to, you, if you want to, that's what another thing. Say now, if you want to buy, if you want to trade, if you want to get food and everything, you're gonna to have to take on what the mark of the beast, mm-hmm. which Come is saying on. that I am the devil is my god. Right. That's, right, That's what you're saying. The Come devil on. is my god, and so mm-hmm. now once you have done that, you you're just about lost forever. Right. Because you sold your soul to the devil. There you go. There you go. And this is what happens now. This is what's going right. on now. We have the choice. You can either sell your soul to the devil or you can sell your soul to God. But after the rapture, 
There is no God in the earth to sell your soul to. That's it. Come on. That's it. So, so in order to eat, you're going to have to either make the choice. Am I going to sell my soul like Esau? For a pot of bread, a pot of meat. Come on. Sell, sell mm. your birthright. Mm. Or are you gonna you gonna take on take on and say, okay, the, I, I submit. The devil is my god. Mm-hmm. You don't want. To, this is the thing. We don't know you. You you don't have a clue of what's coming after after. Jesus comes back. Amen. That's it, brother. You you think, oh, we're going to party, party. No, uh uh-uh. Because the devil ain't trying to be your friend. That's it. That's it. The devil ain't trying to be your friend. He ain't going to, he going to change, he is going to change his, his, uh, 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 he, he going to change See, right now he is under lock and key. He can only do but so much. But mm-hmm. once the Spirit of God, because the Spirit of God keeps him from doing all that he would do. Yes. The Spirit of God in the earth Come on. keeps him from doing what he want to do. But see, mm-hmm. what he wants to do is destroy and kill everybody. Because what? He is going, he is bound for the lake of fire. And he wants to take as many people with him as he can. Right. And so watch this. By appealing to your flesh in mon- mon- monumentous proportions. Uh-huh. As the Spirit of God is taken, oh, my God. Yeah. You're talking about murders and and rapes and, and, and all kind of sin going on. It's going to be worse did Sodom and Gomorrah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's it. Yes, and sir, watch brother. this. And people, and some people will still be going to church, playing church. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but the Spirit of God is gone. But they will still be in church, going to church, playing church. Mm-hmm. Like they've been doing now. Just like you're doing now. Mm-hmm. Going to church, playing church. Yeah. That's it, brother. Come on. Yes. Like we say again, you know, Satan, he just, you know, he's doing his job, my friends. He's uh, making us comfortable, you know. He gets the world, you know, uh, the, the, the gospel is what's supposed to be preached, you know. But if he can get... Uh, you know, if people to hear, you know, all this other stuff and not what's to come. See, Jesus put this stuff in here for a good reason. He put the he put the word in here for us to go by and to live by it, and also, you know, uh, to to get us up out of here because just like uh, somebody give you false information on how to get home. Let's say for instance you got a map, and the map got false information on it. It takes you to a dead end. It don't take you home. You know, it's taking you to a dead end. But the Bible is why it's very important for, you know, everyone to have a copy of this. You know, this is why it's written, you know, for us to read it and understand what we are reading. You know, uh, Hosea said we uh, perish for the lack of knowledge. And, you know, that's a very important thing to try to get a hold to because if I don't know what's going on, in this book, you know, how can I get home, so to speak? And we have to leave here, like you said earlier, bro. We got to, we just, we just passing by this place. We have to get to another place. In other words, we have to die, you know, to cross over, so to speak. So if I'm afraid, if, if, if you know, if, if I'm, if I don't want to hear it, you know, if I can hear anything but the word, anything else but this, but the real truth. And when this time comes, you know, it was telling us how people would be running, telling the mountains to fall on them. They could be doing the big, the big president, the people that lead us. You know, these are the people that's going to be running also. You see what I'm saying? But what my point is, if everyone, everyone, everyone would buckle down right now because this time is coming. It's coming. 
Peter was saying this 2,000 years ago, way over 2,000 years ago, the day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is coming. So it, it's pretty close. I don't know exactly when. I can't pinpoint that. But I'm saying it's coming. So why not have the right map? Why not have the right thing to take us home, you know? I mean, it, it's simple. You know, he got it written here. So we need to have the right uh, stuff to take us out of here. But false information, which which, which uh, this book we were talking about, the false teachers was telling them something else. And so they were thinking, well, I ain't going to make it now because the day of the Lord has already come. Some people are thinking, you know, back in the Thessalonians here, they thought the Lord had already come, you know, and, and, and missed them. Well, you know, I'm going to hell anyway. It's okay. So if you see, that's false information, you know. But um, Paul said, listen, don't be deceived. And when we have the word in us, we cannot be deceived because, you know, I mean, things going to come and things going to go. We're going to have trouble, trial, tribulation. Jesus said that. But, you know, we have a hope for the future home, the one that we can't see. We in the apostle talking about the other night. There's a home that we cannot see, you know, but he said that he done went and, and, and got men in mansions waiting for us. So this is the home that we are anticipating. You know, we don't anticipate nothing here because all this stuff the Bible says is going to be burnt up. It's going to be gone. Nothing's going to be left here. So why anticipate staying here when we got a, a, a mansion, a mansion up there waiting on us? So let's let's, let's anticipate that. A mansion a thousand times greater than the mansions that are on earth. Amen. They were showing... They were showing now, I'm not going to get into this a lot. And Minister James, if you don't have it, get the scripture for tonight. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Uh, uh, they were showing the most, the most expensive mansion in New Jersey. They had that on the, on the TV the other day. Mm. He said this home was $43 million. Mm. 11-car garage. And it got four kitchens, four kitchens, and all kind of closets, and bed nine or something, nine or more bedrooms, and and over ten bathrooms, and and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Chandelier, grand grand foyers, and everything. Mm. And 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 the place that God has for us is even a thousand times. Better than that. Amen. Say, how would you settle for this temporary? Because you're going to die and leave it rather than to, to attain eternal, living that life eter- forever. Mm-hmm. Forever right. and ever. You, you got to be, you, something got to be wrong with you. If that's what you, you would rather just give it to me now, give it to me now. No mind later. Well, uh, you, you, you're going to be sorry, to mis- sorry, sadly mistaken. Because yes, what's sir. coming later is, can be a thousand times better. It can be a thousand times worse. Mm. Mm. Amen. Somebody said, somebody said, well, I, I don't believe you. Okay, look at it this way. Suppose I'm right. Mm. Suppose what I'm saying is right, and what you believe is wrong. Come on. Suppose, mm. suppose. Well, how do you know you're right? Because I'm telling you what the Bible says. That's it. Right. But I, either you believe the Bible or you don't. Now, if you don't, be, if you don't believe the Bible, then we got an issue right there. You got mm. a problem right there. Come on. Mm-hmm. That says that you don't believe God. You don't believe right. in God. Now, I understand that. I understand that. But what we are trying to say to you that don't believe in God, you believe in something. Yeah. <laughs> and first yeah. of all, you have, to, you have to believe that first there is a God in order to believe that there is not a God. Right. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you got to first believe that there is a God in order to believe there is not a God, or there ain't no such thing as a God. Well, you got to first believe that there is a such thing. Well, you, why you call him God then? Come on, Paul. Yes, Peter, 
Paul, Paul on the roads of Damascus and Saul, and 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 the, you you read that experience. And what did he say? Who is that, Lord? Come on. You, never, you didn't know Jesus. You hadn't seen him. That's right. Yeah. And he acknowledged, Lord. <laughs> yes. Saul, Saul, why you persecute me? And Saul said, "Who is that, Lord? Uh, Look at that! Look at yeah. that! I don't know who you are, but I know there's something about you that is greater than what I know because of what's going on with me right now." Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to our scripture. Let's read that. Read. Amen. First, second Thessalonians, second chapter, it says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be so soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as from as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means that that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it right there. Except there become a falling away first. Mm-hmm. We are seeing right now that being manifest. Yeah. There's a great falling away. Mm-hmm. We see it. This, yeah. this, this generation is a godless generation. Mm-hmm. And it's right. become evident of that more and more. Children, mm-hmm. young you got you got younger children, twelve and ten and eleven and 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 fifteen years old children committing heinous crimes, doing unspeakable acts at right. ten years old, twelve years yeah. old, killing each yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. When I was ten years old, I wasn't thinking about killing nobody. I wasn't thinking about raping nobody. I wasn't thinking about robbing nobody. Mm. But this, I wasn't thinking about gang, gang, uh, 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 gang banging and beating up people at ten years old. But this is what's going on today. Mm-hmm. That's it, bro. Yeah. So. So, so we have Come less on. and less of people believing and work and following God. Why? One, because see, our generation is dying off. Mm-hmm. Our parents' generation is dying off. Yeah. So now, 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 our children and our grandchildren did not come up. In the things of God, like we did, yes, because their parents didn't teach them God, and so then that grandchild, by the time that grandchild is born, he don't know nothing about God, and yeah. he's growing up in a world that don't teach him, show him, and really is telling him we want to eradicate God from the whole picture. Yes, we don't want to have prayer in schools. We don't want to have God in, in the uh, the pledge of allegiance. We don't want to. We don't want to. No prayer. No scriptures. No nothing. Thou shalt not. All those scriptures that used to be in in state buildings, we're taking that off. And anything that has to do with God, we're taking that out. Mm-hmm. That's the falling yeah. away. That's right. And the That's son right. of petition, which is a man of sin, is now standing tall. Mm-hmm. In the eyes of the people, sin. Everything that sin is is being magnified mm-hmm. to say that this is good. That's right. 
That's it, bro. That's it. He's been revealed. He's being revealed what the what sin is, the wrong, and what sin is is supposed to be. Uh, was supposed to be a wrong in our eyes. He's been revealed as the right thing to do. There you go. As the right man. This is the right way to go, y'all. This is the right thing to do. Uh, it's okay. It's okay to abort a child. Mm-hmm. It's okay to kill your neighbor. It's okay. It's okay to commit fornication. It's okay, okay for men to marry men and for women to marry women. Yes. Yes, sir. You own it. You own it. That's right. This is what you the are, man. This is what the son of petition is is telling society today. All of these things what the Bible says is wrong, he's saying, and and he's magnifying and the and the world is saying, Okay, okay. We'll take that. We'll take that. We'll do that. We'll do it. We'll do it and we won't and we'll do and see, this is the thing about the devil. You say, Well, I do it one. I'll do one. But you don't understand the devil. He don't do anything with restraint. Mm. Wow. He gets you to do one, but then after a while, you're doing it full blown. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, well, let's clarify. The devil does not make anybody do anything. He don't mm. have that kind of power. He can't get in your body and make you do anything. But the power that he has is the power of suggestion. He will suggest Uh to you, ah, go ahead and sleep with her. Ah, go on out there and drink that. Ah, go on out there and commit this. And see, when the devil, when he gets you to do it and you've done it, then he sit back and say, I didn't make you do that. So, so, so when you're standing in the court because you went out and you committed a crime, you're standing there by yourself because the devil said, "You the fool." <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. That's I didn't make you do nothing. You went and mm-hmm. did it because that's what you 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 allowed me to suggest it, and you said you uh, you took my suggestion. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. This, is, this is how he's being revealed. Mhm. That's it. Okay, That's read. It. Unless you want to, uh, unless you want to expound on that too. But if well, not, no, you you you, you did a did a wonderful job. I mean, that's very good. You know, like I say, the enemy just, you know, he takes us out of our, you know, out of what we need to do and put us where we don't want supposed to be, and uh, we miss the word. And this is what Paul is telling the brothers here. He said, you know. Concerning the coming of the Lord, you know, we have to, you know, really be on point just to get this thing, you know. They was uh, having a little trouble, and the tribulation was hitting them, and it was going through. They thought they had missed the thing, but Paul, he had to straighten them out and let them know that it hadn't happened yet. And like you was just got finished talking about all these things that the world done did now, you see. Now, back when, these people were living right. See what I'm saying? This Paul, I mean, this was a time where we, they were living good. I mean, doing what the, the Bible was saying, because they were looking for the Lord, you know, looking for him. Now, uh, people are not even looking for him anymore. You see what I'm saying? They done got so into sin, like you were saying, so into uh, the world system, so to speak, they're not even looking for him. That's why Paul was telling them in the other verse, he said, he's coming like a thief in the night. So they was anticipating this thing. They were like, okay, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. So when the, the, the tribulations and trials hit them, now they worried, thinking they done miss it. Man, grace is now, we were talking about this a lot of times, the Lord's grace is here. The people don't even, they're so blind. They don't even see it now, okay? They don't see the things that are happening. Okay, let's let a man marry a man. That's okay, man. That's life. Like you were saying, everything you were saying is true. Uh let 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 this go by. Let's let that go by. It, it'll be all right, man. You know, uh, it, it's all good. It's all good. So now uh, it's done got almost to the point where 
I mean, the next event could be Jesus Christ coming, man. I'm, I'm real. I'm being for real here. The next event could be him coming because look at the things that done happened since the 2,000 years these folks were looking for Christ. Look at all that done happened. Man, it's, it is at the door. It is at the door. And, and we need to really, really try to get this thing right because we don't know, man. We don't, it, it, it's very, very close. Very close. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to continue to read now. I'm, I'm just wanting to put that in there. It's hitting us in the face. It's hitting, yes, us, it is. hitting us straight in the face. Read, because we, we are, we're, we're all in the scripture. Read it. Read it. Go ahead. Four, four, okay, fourth verse. Okay. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship. Wait, wait, wait now. Look, what we're saying how the devil is 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 showing himself yep. to be God. That's it. The things of God. I am God. I'm the way that you should live. And and God has already established the way that we should live. But we're now the world is embracing the things of the devil. And they're embracing him as their God. Amen. Okay, read. Okay, so that he sits as God in the temple in of the God. Temple. Come on now. See, mm-hmm. see now he done made himself God and sitting in the place of God. Uh-huh. Yep. Showing <laughs> himself. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How okay. do you say that? How do you say that? Because I've told you before, you have to watch these places that you go. Mm-hmm. These different ministries and churches. And they'll say, oh, the Spirit of the Lord is here. Yeah. But wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who is that that they're calling the Spirit of the Lord? Mm-hmm. What spirit is that? Who is that spirit? Because right. if if the church if the church is if the church is governed by sin, then it can't be the spirit of Jehovah God. It's another spirit that they have elected to be God. So they moved God out and said, Now we're gonna bring you in and you will be God. And so mm-hmm. They are shouting, dancing, singing, praising. All it is, another spirit that is not the spirit of God. Yeah. But they're calling it God. Mm. And this is the transfer that we're seeing. That the sin is in the temple of God as showing himself that he is God. That's it. That's it. Mm. Amen. And they worship. They worship in this man. You know, this is why I say we are kind of. They got it twisted. These people are worshiping this. You know, this was. If, if this, this is going to happen, this is the thing that's going to come. And you know, if we worship this, like you were saying, take that mark, and we we just finished. We are finished. You see, he gonna set himself up. He gonna. You heard about seven years. Three and a half years good, and the last three and a half years he's gonna really show himself. This is what he's doing right now. He's setting himself up to be God and to worship this. I mean, the word tells us, Jesus tells us, Matthew, all these look, when these things come, you know, the abomination of desolation, standing away, not this is what he is talking about right here. You see, so these are the things that we are supposed to really get a hold to, and, and that way. You know, when these things occur, we can be like these Thessalonians here. We cannot worry because uh, we know, we know for a fact that Jesus said what's going to happen before he comes. All these things are going to happen. Then he comes. So when we see these things, we are that believers. We don't have a problem with it. You see, only problem we're going to have, like Jesus told us, we're going to be persecuted. You know, they're going to they're take us out and kill us and whatever. Now, these are the things, but guess what? They're better on the other side because, again, this is not our home. So we know not to worship this thing. We know not to worship this. Now, 
times it's gonna get hard, and and you know bread and water is probably gonna be hard to get. But 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 we have a hope. We have a hope in Jesus. And he, I heard the scripture say that I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So if I got all this hope within me, I Jesus gonna make a way. You know, he'll make a way for us. So we shouldn't have to worry about these things. But uh, yeah, I can continue reading on if you need me to now. Go ahead, yes. Fifth verse. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Mm -hmm. And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. Okay? Mm -hmm. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Wait, yeah. right? Wait right there. Now, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Remember? Remember? And you, you go back, and you that, you that hear this broadcast, remember, say, them guys told me what to look for. Amen. The Bible tells you what to look for. Now, you see, we're putting a cap on it. We're putting a title to it. We're putting a, 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 a name on what happens, what's going on now. The spirit of lawlessness. Uh -huh. What does that mean? Lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Lawless. Lawless. That means that... that Anything goes. Right. Anything right. goes. Whatever you want. It, whatever you want to do, just do it. This is the world yeah. we're living in today. Whatever yeah. you want to do, do it. Do it without no restraint. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's fine. This is what the spirit of lawlessness ushers and does and teaches and, and, and promotes. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, do it. As long as it feels good to your flesh, it's okay to do. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is what's going on. This is the spirit that is in operation. But see, like I said, it 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 starts on on a, on a scale like this. Okay, let's say like this: on a scale from one to ten, it starts out as a one. Mm-hmm. But guess what? When you start doing it, it becomes a 10. All right. Now it's full blown. Don't. Yeah. Okay. Let's see it like this. Let's see it like this. Let's see it like this. Devil say. The devil suggests. Oh, have a drink. One drink on. Just do it one time. You say, yeah, you know, one drink ain't going to help. But see, you don't understand that one drink, the demonic spirit that's connected mm -hmm. to what's in that glass mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all come into your body. All right. You open the door <laughs> to bring that demonic spirit into your life. That's what that one drink did. That's it. And see, demons, demons is, is, is they, 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 you know, they're like, well, it's just a little bit. It's just one. And then it ain't going to hurt nobody. Mm -hmm. That's not what they want. They want to come in and, and, and take your house. That's right. That's right. They want to possess your house. Mm. And Amen. this is what the spirit of lawlessness has promoted and produced. That one drink, now you're drinking not instead of one drink, you 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 know what? I need a drink. Yes, sir. Ooh, I'm so aggravated I need a drink. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sick of sick and tired of this. I need a drink. 
Mm-hmm. He made me so mad. She made me so mad. I just go need me a drink. Mm-hmm. Now you gave the demon and the devil something to work with. You've opened up. You've opened up that that channel to them. Now they got something to work with. When you were supposed to have dominion over them, watch this now. When you were supposed to have dominion over them, now they got dominion over you. Exactly. That's right. That's right, bro. Spirit of lawlessness is there. The, the demons don't. The demons. Demons are not your friend. No. They're not your friend. They're not trying to be friends with you. But they come in, they come in, you you watch a snake, a snake would lay there and he act like, he act like he don't even see you there. He'll sit around, he'll crawl around, he'll curl around, and he don't, he'll act like you don't even see, he'll, but he's sitting there and all, all the time he's sitting there watching you. And hmm. when you got comfortable around him and not paying him no attention, bam. That's when he got you. That's it. When he That's it. You. Going back to what we said in the beginning, because your oil, you ain't got no oil in your, you, you don't ran out of gas. Yeah. And so when when you don't have gas in your in you, you're vulnerable. When the spirit mm. of the Lord is not strong in you, you're vulnerable. Putting on yeah. the, the whole armor of God. And you begin yeah. to take Parts of the armor off. You took off the the, the, the helmet of salvation. You took mm-hmm. off the shield of faith. You took off the the preparation the foot, the preparation preparation the, the preparation of the gospel. You took all of that off, and now you yeah. sitting there armorless. Yeah. So the enemy comes, he can hit you wherever he wants to because you don't have no protection on. That's right. That's it. That's it, bro. That's it. That's it. This is the magnified. This is the magnified uh, attributes of the spirit of lawlessness. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Amen. Fifth verse: He who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Amen. Mm-hmm. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. Uh-oh. Watch that. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Look at that now. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Who's behind all of this? Wait. There you go. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. According to the working of Satan, with all power, mm. sign, mm. and lying wonders, mm. and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Powers, signs, and lying wonders. Mm-hmm. Powers, signs, and lying wonders. Mm-hmm. But to convince you that this stuff is good, yeah. this stuff is okay. Mm-hmm. This stuff, and and that's the purpose of the the the, the lying wonders and 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 see, I well I I could I could raise the dead like Jesus did. I could. Yeah. Do, you don't need Jesus. Come to me. I could do what he did, and I could even do it better. There you go. And remember, you remember, you remember, you remember, but now, wait a minute. Moses had an encounter with a piece of this. Because God told him to say, take out your rod. And the Bible says the rod became a snake. Mm -hmm. So Pharaoh's magicians got up and said, well, huh, we could do that too. And they took out that rod and they... Rod became a snake. Mm-hmm. But what happened between, what What was the difference between Moses' rod, or Moses' snake, and the magician's magician snake? You got the Bible, to swallow it up. There you go. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. 
But when it comes to, huh, I can do it too. The devil's saying, I can do that too. Right. But the but but the the when God does something, is is he, he gonna outdo what the devil does? Amen. But if you don't know God and you don't know the Word, you would think, "Woo, look at that, look at that. Amen. That's that's Amen. God. That's God. Yes, that's Amen. God. But that's God, Satan. Wow. Not God, Jehovah. That's God, Satan. And you Amen. have to know." You have to know the difference. Amen. Amen. Tenth verse. Tenth verse. Read it. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth. Uh oh. Mm hmm. Didn't want to that hear the is. truth. That's right. You wouldn't receive the truth. Mm hmm. You wouldn't embrace the truth. Mm -hmm. So what? So you might be what? Saved. 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 That's it. That's it. That's it. Right. Okay. Now, read. Read. There's 11th verse, but read it slow as you can. And for this reason, God will send them strong. Whoa, 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 whoa. God, who will do it? God. God. Mm -hmm. Well, for this reason, because you were, you didn't want to hear the truth, God will do what now? He will send them strong delusion mm. Mm -hmm. that they should believe the lie. You're going to sin. God is going to allow mm -hmm. your mind to be deluded. Mm -hmm. You're going to you let your mind, because you refuse to believe the truth, okay, so then... So then, you, you, okay, that's okay. Okay, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And and if anybody out there has ever experienced a hallucinogenic, a hallucinogenic drug, mm -hmm. makes you hallucinate. Oh yeah. To see things that are not there. But your mind says it's there. This is what the delusion will make you hallucinate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is this is what you're seeing when you're not seeing. And oh. God says, because you wouldn't believe the truth, then I'm going to let you see what you think you see, but it's not there. All right. <laughs> You'll be, you. all you will see is a lie. Mm-hmm. And not the truth. Amen. You will see. You will see because you refuse it, because you will because you refuse to hear and to see the truth. You will say, "Why does God kill so many people? Why mm -hmm. does God do this? Why does God do that? Why does God allow? God don't allow nothing. You do. Right. That's right. That's right." Mm -hmm. Wow, that's why you, this is why you seeing you you seeing stuff, but you, but 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 what you see in the truth is not in it. That's it. That's why it. does God, if, if He's a loving God, why does He send so many people? Why does He allow people to go to hell? God don't allow. God in the, God made He God says I'm making every possible means for you not to go to hell but you chose to go to hell so God that's don't right. send nobody to hell that's it you wanted to go so you sent yourself that's it that's but you're it. standing there talking about why God sent me to hell God did not send you <laughs> he did everything oh, no. that he possibly can so that you didn't have to be there come on priest that's, come the, on. Truth. that's the truth See, right there, when you go back to looking at what's the truth, the truth is that, why, uh, so so I was thinking about this guy. Mm -hmm. This guy, he, uh, Mr. James, this guy would walk down the street. He was a homeless guy. Now, watch, I'm going to show you the delusion. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a mind being delusional, delusionalized. Mm-hmm. 
this guy would walk down the street, and because he was he had it so bad, and because he was homeless and had to go out and beg for food and no clothes, no place to stay or nothing, he walked down the street flipping God's bird. Wow. <clears throat> you see him walking down the street, and he'll look up and, and flip God the bird. Wow. Wow. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't tell me it's God's fault that you're in the state you're in. When you made the wrong choices. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is the problem. See, this is this is this is a, a prime example of being in the mindset of delusion. Come on. Hey. You're saying this is God's fault that I'm in the state that I'm in when you made the choice. Mm. Preach it, man. Preach it. Yes. That's right. That man is homeless because he made some bad choices. Mm hmm. That's right. He's, he's homeless and don't have a food or a place to live because he. He wouldn't do what he needed to do for himself. Hmm. Amen, bro. Amen. And tell him again why he did this. Why did he do this now? Why did he stand a strong illusion? Because you why? refused the, the truth. The love of the truth. Come on, man. And now, now, <laughs> now ain't that something? He he loved us. He loved that's us. Mm -hmm. that's and, that's, and that's the truth that he loved us, see? Mm -hmm. And they refused it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, for this reason, God say, okay, mm -hmm. you have what you want. Just like you say, you have what you want. And what mm -hmm. did they want? Mm. Wow, wow, wow. You would, you, rather, you would rather to, he said, I stand before you today. And I present to you life. Mm -hmm. You could either have life, door number one. <laughs> you have death. I'm gonna tell you yeah. what. I'm gonna tell you what now. As the game show host, pick door number one. Mm -hmm. Give me the answer. Behind, yes. the, I'm giving you the answer. It's behind number one. <laughs> All but right. You say, nah, I'm taking <laughs> door number two. <laughs> now wait a minute. I told you to pick number one. <laughs> Lord, but you much. decided I'm going to take number two. All so right. now, when you when door number two opens <laughs> and all this craziness is behind it, you say, oh, no, man, I should have picked number one. He said, I gave you the answer. I told you what to do, but you refused to take. And because you refused the truth, now you got what's behind double number two. This is yours. There you go. This there you is go. yours. You you can't take it or leave it. You got to take it. Wow, I can't trade it back in for number two. No, 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 no. no. I should have listened to me the first time when I okay. told you to choose door number one. All right, all right. That's it. That's how it's laid out, brother. That's how it's laid out. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. That's Just how it's laid out. Oh, that's, 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 the, that's the problem. That's the problem. Mm. That's the problem. And so wow. now you took number one. I mean, door mm -hmm. number two. Now you get everything that comes with it. And yes. now you're being deceived. Yes, sir. You have yes, been sir. deceived. When I've given you the answer, you let somebody else say to you, no, door number two. You must let's yeah. make a deal. They say, what door to take? Number two, number two, number two. And the man standing there saying, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, 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 I'm trying to tell you, take door. Don't take that door. Wow. You, listen, you listen to other voices. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's you listen it. to them other voices, but the the right voice was telling you what to do. All right. And you chose to listen to them people who don't, who, who don't, they don't know, they don't know what you're in for. Come on. Come on. 
Wow. Yes, sir. Beautifully, man. Beautifully so, put. So, so we, the body of Christ, we should be shouting, door number one, pick number one. When they turn around and look at you, so what door to pick? You, you, should, you should have one, 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 pick number one, pick number one. Why? Because I know what's behind number one. I've been uh-huh. there. I've seen it. I experienced yes. it. I'm seeing yes. it. I'm living it. And door number one is the better choice. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's it. A, a better yet, if you the announcer, you know, you, you put it back there. If Jesus said, I went, and, I went to heaven and built the houses. Now I'm showing you how to get here. And, and, yeah. and you still listen to that, something else. So mm. I'm going to give you some strong illusion. I'm going to give you just what you want here mm. on earth. You got it. Mm-hmm. Amen, brother. Amen. Wow. Go well, ahead, you know, read. Yeah, 12 verse. That they all may be. Comment and, and then read, sir. Say again? Finish your, your your comment and then you can start reading. No, it's okay. I, we, I, I think it's going to be in this right here in the 12 verse, okay? That they all mm-hmm. may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Uh-oh. Okay? Yeah. Uh-oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh-oh. 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 You refused, but you took pleasure in unrighteousness. That's right. As you said, God said, do this. And and people think, well, you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do what my flesh wants to do. Mm-hmm. Unrighteous. So I'm going to drink. I'm going to drink all this liquor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then get home with your face in the toilet bowl. Mm-hmm. Then what are you doing? Praying to God. Oh, God, I ain't going to do this no more. <laughs> oh, you let me do this. I ain't going to do it no more. Why? Because... If you had no, if you had no, excuse me, the toilet, your face, the toilet bowl was not made for you, excuse me, for your face. (laughs) The toilet bowl was not made for a place to put your face in. (laughs) It's made for a place to put your bottom in. (laughs) Not your face. And there's something wrong with a person that's face is in the toilet bowl. That's true. For any reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's something wrong with something. Watch this. Something is wrong with your body. That your body has your face in the middle of a toilet bowl. Oh, yeah. But yeah, you yeah. had you, but you had pleasure in unrighteousness. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's right. Because you would rather do what God says not to do. Yeah. yeah. This is where you're going. This is what's going to happen. You're going to be yeah. damned. You said you will be damned. Uh, 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 you will be in hell. That's it. That's it. And you know, brother, you know, uh, if you go a little deeper than that, you know, uh, when you... Uh, go out there and, you know, you have sex, you know, with somebody, you know, that's not your wife or, you know, you got one or two girlfriends out there, man, you know. See, this is um, what he was saying. You're taking pleasure in doing this, which is unrighteous. So the strong delusion comes, okay, man, this is this is better than home. Then you run into another lady, oh, this is better than that one. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now... Mm-hmm. You hook out there, laying down with mm. all these women, okay? And mm. everyone that you be with, oh, this one is better. Oh, this one is better. That ain't nothing but what you were saying earlier, how Satan just throwing the line out there, and you just grabbing each bait. You grab the bait. He throws it out there, and, and, and you grab that bait. So now you done got yourself hooked up out there with all these different spirits because, you know, when you engage with another woman, you know, this is, I'm talking from experience. This is why I'm telling you this, man, because I know this is something that's hard to break, brother. I'm telling you. I'm telling you this is from experience. It's hard to break. When you go out there and dip and dab like that, my man, I'm telling you, uh, it is so, so hard to get back in. 
So I understand what Paul was saying, that you have to kill flesh daily. You have to daily kill flesh because some of the things that you go out there and dip in, I'm telling you, man, it's hard to get out of it, you see. So if the Lord brings you out of this thing, give him glory. Give him, I mean, give him glory because, you know, the thing is so hard to break. So if you, you ever break it, please do not go back and do it again because, as he told a woman, you know, that was caught um, in the adultery, he said, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Because Jesus knows, uh, he, he knows all of what we go through with. So when we go and dip and dab in, I'm getting a little deeper because when you, you know, I'm talking about another flesh here, when you mess around in somebody else's flesh, man, that's some powerful stuff right there. And sometimes you can't get out of it, you know. So if the Lord pulls you out of something like that, please, please try not to go back. And if you should ha don't have the power, pray. You know, ask him to give you the, 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 the power not to go back to something like that or, or, and, and share it. Stay away from it because he said that you take pleasure. You take pleasure in doing this stuff. So uh, when we like what we're doing, you know what I'm saying, it's going to drive us further and further and further away from home. Next thing you know, you're so far away from home, you can't get back. And that's a sad thing. You cannot get back home. But, you know, just remember that Jesus can do all things and do not dip and dab, please. And this is from experience. You know, I've been there. I've been there. You know, you have to pray for stuff like this. You have to continue to pray. Go ahead, bro. You, you, uh, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Yes. You, you just, you just, <laughs> you just exhorted verses uh, 14, 15. <laughs> you just said, you just said it. You just said it. Stand fast and hold the traditions that have been taught whether by word or by pistol, hold on to what God has delivered you from. What well, I wanted to say about that is that when you and you, you the the Lord has you speaking to some young man mm -hmm. that is out there, some young mm -hmm. woman that is out there, mm -hmm. some person. They might not be young. They might be middle aged. They might be old. But you're going from bed to bed. Man to man, woman to woman. And see, disease don't have a face. Amen. Mm. AIDS don't have a face. Unless that person is in the last stages of AIDS, you'll never know that they have it by looking at them. Amen. And so, uh, 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 you go and lay with that person, and, and like you said, you was in a good relationship with your wife, with your husband, and you and you going out, and these people are spreading this disease that you went to bed with one with them one time. Well, I used the condom. Well, you have to understand, disease is not stopped by a condom because the right. virus travels. Condoms is made out of plastic, and plastic has holes in them. So yet, yet, although they are wearing a condom, although you are wearing a condom, it does not stop the virus from contact, contracting you. So when that virus gets on you, you stop. Now, now... Your happy home has been destroyed yeah. because you have bought this detrimental disease into your house. You bought it. You did it. You bought it in. You bring it in. You did it. Now we all got to suffer with this. Man. Our family got to suffer. Our relationship got to suffer with this. We can't mm -hmm. enjoy each other no more because you brought this in. And then, uh, that, I mean, beside that, okay, well, I did it, but I didn't, I didn't bring home no disease. But the trust issue, the love issue, yeah. you, you messed up. You, you, broke, you broke the covenant of marriage. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Joel. And the Bible says, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from God. 
So now oh. you have just broke that favor uh, with God. Covenant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, There's bro. no more covenant. There's no more favor on your marriage because you broke that agreement. Come on. Come on. Man. Now, you, you, if you stay together with your wife, you're just together. And look, and just like Minister James said, now when you're standing here trying to make up, so it might take you five years mm-hmm. of the relationship trying to right. prove back to your wife your faithfulness uh, when you should have been in love and joy and just enjoying each other and just having a good time for five whole years. You lost five whole years of your life. You know, they were talking about uh, 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 this actress, 93 years old. Uh, what's her name? White. Last name White. She was married to Alan Ludden, uh, the host of Password. And she said, they asked her, said, what is one of your biggest regrets in life? She said that for one year, I would refuse his offer to marry me. Wow. And we could have been married and enjoying each other. Now that he's dead and gone and she haven't remarried, and she's Betty White. That's her name, Betty White. Betty mm-hmm. White, people who know Betty White, you read her, or pull up her story, and she says her biggest regret is that for one year she refused Adel, Alan Ludden's uh, uh, offer to marry him. And she said, mm-hmm. now if we could have that one year back, oh, I would be so happy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's something, yeah. And that's now it. if your marriage is messed up, because you, 15 minutes. Wow. You yeah. destroyed the covenant in 15 minutes. You thought, wow. you thought, oh, it's like Minister James said, oh, this is better over here. It's going to be better over there. It's going to be better. And then now you've got baby mama drama. you yeah. got you got all kind of stuff going on in your life, in your world, that was not there before. You was living happily ever after with your wife. Live, live in peace, the Bible says, with, with the wife of your youth. Rather mm-hmm. than now you got all this other craziness going on because of stupid decisions that you made. Amen. Amen. That's true, man. Strong, yeah. the, the strong delusion is that you think that you can do it and get away with it. There you go. That's the delusion. That's what the delusion is. I can do this and I can get away with it. She won't know. She won't know. She won't know. He won't know. Nobody else but she don't even know. God, God knows. That's right. That's right. A lot of times, you know. uh Go go ahead, ahead. sir. No, a lot of times, you know, yeah, we say we, um, it's more than, if you know you're doing it, somebody else knows. You might think nobody knows, but, you know, hey, if your your business gets out in the street now, the minute you do something, it ain't like it used to be way back. You know what I'm saying? You do something now, you know, hey, you got to, don't have the words. Somebody's going to find out, man, because, you know, this is how the Lord is revealing things now because, like I said, these are the last days, you know, we're living in, and, you know, you can't hide nothing no more. Everything is being revealed, so to speak. So, yes, you know, we, we just beg and plead tonight, you know, that, you know, somebody would, you know, get something out of this because, you know, this is real and we are we were reading scriptures from the from the holy word of God, man. That what we was doing, right? We were reading his scriptures. This ain't nothing that we are making up. Uh and that right apostle, we're not making this stuff up. That's right, that's right. That's right. No. Come out of the Bible. That's right. So uh, just please, I mean we don't want no one I mean the the, the faith, the wrath of God because one day, you know, it's coming. And it could be tomorrow. It could be the next five minutes. You know, we don't know. But, you know, if we have his word in us and we believe what his word is saying, and he said the, the, the love of truth, you know, <laughs> the love of truth. So just uh, grab hold to this truth that he's talking about. Hold fast with it. Stand fast like the apostle was saying. Then, you know, when these things come, we can be rest assured because why? 
we still fast. You know, we hold on. You know, I mean, think about it. I mean, what price could you pay for going to heaven? What price, you know? Uh, like we was just saying, the pleasures of this earth are, you know, going to heaven, which that's a choice, you know, two choices. But we know sometimes it gets hard because, you know, what we read here in the scriptures are how the, the son of perdition and the things that he brings. He brings signs, lying, wonders, and power. He brings these things, but the word tells us, it tells us we have to hold fast to the truth. The truth of the thing. The truth. What is the truth? Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? He was standing there looking at truth, you see. Jesus Christ is the truth. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. He's all these things wrapped up in one. Whatever you need, he said, I am. Whatever the situation is, I am. He has it. So we beg tonight to just continue, you know, to trust him, you know, Get him to be your Lord and Savior because he is the only one that's going to take us out of this. And I must say this, this is a mess that that, that, that is going to come. It's, it's, it's not bad yet, you know. We think it's bad, but no, it's not bad because, you know, the Bible tells us the things that are going to come. So please, you know, every, I would like to see everybody go to heaven. I would like to see that, but, uh, you know, we have to believe in Christ in order to do this, so. We have to get him into our heart and into our mind and just hold fast. You know, being a Christian is not hard. It's not hard, you know. Just believe on Jesus Christ and he said, you shall be saved. You know, this is all, that's all I got, man. That's, that's all I can say tonight. But I, I pray that, you know, the people would just, you know, that's not saved now. That one that's not saved. Get saved. Get the Lord in your heart and keep him there. You know, please, please do it. You know, do it. Not you know, do it for yourself because you, you, you will be riding on this. It's something that you're going to be riding on. You know, uh, not the believer, but the, for the unbeliever. That's what Paul was trying to get them to see. You know, that the unbeliever. You know, it, it, you have to believe something. You know, we have to believe that Jesus is who He say He is, or either He's lying. Whichever one you believe, believe it. You know, please, you know, just do that. And, 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 and get it right. That's all I can say. Please try to get it right. It is not hard. Go ahead, Apostle. I'm sorry. Don't make permanent decisions mm -hmm. of temporary situations. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll say it again. Don't make permanent decisions yes. about temporary situations. Yes. Yes, yes. Don't make hell, no, don't make decision about your flesh mm -hmm. Don't make that, don't let that be your decision. I'm going Amen. to do it my say because your flesh is temporary. That's it. Your permanent situation is either Heaven or hell, hey. and you're making hey. you're making permanent decisions about a temporary situation. Mm -hmm. Do this now, but have this later. Mm -hmm. Do this now mm -hmm. and live here forever. Mm -hmm. Do this now and do what Jesus said to do and have eternal life, life hey. forever, or do what the Bible says not to do and have death forever. That's it. That's it. We're going to do, we're going to, I I'm, I'm, I don't know when, but I feel that I think we, we, I know people don't like to hear about it, but I'm not here to tell you about what you like to hear. I'm here. We're here to tell you about the truth. That's it, brother. And, That's and it. I want, I want, I want, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, I want us to, we're going to dig in and we're going to see what's waiting for us. Yes. The, 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 why, what, what, the, the, uh, we did that a couple of weeks ago, Revelation 21 
and 20, I mean, the, the 21st chapter, when we did the broadcast, go back and pull it up in our archives, what's in it for me? Go back and listen to that. And that's coming from Revelation, the 20th chapter. It tells you what's in it for you. And, mm -hmm. and when you make the decision to serve God and to please God, oh, brother, oh, brother, eyes have not seen uh -huh. Is you is 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 you can't imagine the huh. things that God has for. Thank you. But if you make the wrong decision and choose yeah. death, choose door number two. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Uh huh. What's coming in hell? Me. What hell Amen. has? We don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. The Bible does say it. The Bible tells you. The Bible gives you clear pictures of what hell is like. Uh -huh. The Bible tells you, and and a lot of you don't read the Bible, study the Bible well enough to see, to be out of the presence of God forever, mm -hmm. when God can't help you. We did that broadcast before. We're going yeah. to the archives with even when God can't help you. When God says, and you sitting in hell saying, oh God, oh God, help me, help me. God said, I can't help you. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do for you. There's nothing. To hear those words, when yes. you need God the most, and he's saying, there's nothing I can do for you. You made wow. choice. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with it. I tried to tell you, don't do this. I tried to show you. I show you my love for you, how I mm -hmm. loved you so much. Yes. It breaks my yes. heart. It breaks my heart. My spirit is crying mm -hmm. because it breaks my heart. How yes, God Lord. loved it so much. And you refused his love. And now you say, yeah. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're here in this place. Yes. You're in yes. this place, and, and it's over. It's over. It's Thank over you. because you refuse to believe the truth. Oh, have mercy. You refuse to believe the truth, and now you need God, and God can't help you. Can't help you. Oh, have mercy. He said, I did everything. I did everything I could to avoid you from going to this place. Yes. I showed you my love. I showed you my passion. I gave my only begotten son. God, I, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, spirit of my spirit, I gave him for you so you don't have to go here. Because I love you so much. Yes. Yes. And you refused my love. <laughs> yes. Now you thank you. Now you are here. Is it too late? Too late. Oh have mercy. Oh have mercy. Mm. Don't let wow. it be said too late. That's it. Don't let That's it be it. said. He used to sing a song said, Don't let it be said. Too late. That's it, man. Mm. Lord, I think. That's it. That's it. The song Amen. says, "The song says, uh, nobody's fault but mine. There's nobody's fault but mine. That's if it. my soul, if I die and my soul be lost, it's nobody's, nobody's fault. fault. It's not God's fault. It won't be God's fault. You can't blame God for this because He said, "I did everything that I could do to avoid this moment with you. Yes. I yes, tried sir. to show you." I gave you options, and you chose. You chose this. You made this. I stood, and I stood in the middle of the road, and I said, don't go that way. Yes. Don't choose this way. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. I'm crying loud to you. Come over here. Hey, hey, where? Come on. No, you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. Turn around. Turn around. Come over here. And you refuse. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. 
I'm going to do what I want to do. Yes. Well. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, <laughs> now the wages of sin is death. That's it. But the That's gift it. of God is eternal life. Woo! Eternal life. The gift. Eternal. The gift. The yes. gift. Yes. Eternal yes. life. Eternal life. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Oh, he made the way. Everything is paid for. All in full, man. It's all paid for. Yeah. All in mercy. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. All you got to do is love him, embrace him, and obey him. Yeah. That's do what he say. Do what he say. It's his game. You got to play against according to his rules. Amen. Amen. You got to play his game according to his rule. That's it. Now do what Good he said do. Good All right, word, man. Stop the prayer. Close us out in prayer. Good word. Good have word. final Father. words just to close us out. I'm sorry. No, just the only thing I can say was good words, very well put, you know. The Lord is coming soon. And that's all I can say, and I just hope and trust and pray that, you know, everyone would find him. That's, that's my prayer, that everyone would find him. But, uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your son Jesus right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the finished work that he did on Calvary's cross. He went there, died, hung there for each and every one of our sins, paid the price. All we have to do is get activated. All we have to do is trust him, repent of our sins, turn, give up our life to him. Let him lead us all the way. And we thank you tonight for uh, just allowing us to be able to try to spread your word, Father. Lord, we thank you because we can't do nothing without you, Jesus. And we just give your name glory. We give you honor. And we praise you this night, Lord. We thank you for saving grace. We thank you right now. That you have not come and caught us, Lord God, with our work undone. We ask Jesus that uh, each and every one that might be listening for change right now, Father, would, would, would accept you as their Lord in this state. And we ask these in Jesus' name. And we just say amen. Amen. Good night. God bless. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We would love to hear from you. You may contact our ministry offices by calling 754-244-6585. Again, that's 754-244-6585. By writing us at Deliverance by Faith Ministries, 300 Marcus Garvey Boulevard, Brooklyn, New York, 11221. Again, that's 300 Marcus Garvey Boulevard, Brooklyn, New York, 11221. By email, www.deliverancebyfaith2 at gmail.com. Again, that's www.deliverancebyfaith2 at gmail.com. We pray that this broadcast has motivated, encouraged, and enlighten you. Thank you so much for listening.